So for three months, right? So for three months, I obviously on Insta, I had started following Wanya Morris from Boys to Men. Um, and um, he would do these lives. He would do these lives every Wednesday. So um, our Thursday, they're Wednesday because they're, they're behind us. Eh? So he'd do these lives, man. And, and I'd see him let people on to talk or to sing. And so I, st- I used to request every time he was on. So I'd see the notification, one is live, click, sweet. So while I'm at work, as a youth worker, typing up my reports, I'm listening to it and trying to request. So for three months, I did that nonstop, mm. three months. And the funniest thing was, because I was when I would see it, he would let on a lot of the ladies on, you know? And I was thinking, wow, what a sad guy. Is he just letting <laughs> on the ladies, you know? Yeah. Like, to have those conversations. And I was like, where's the fellas at? And then yeah, I started to see yeah. some guys there, and I was like, oh, okay, okay, maybe yeah, he's letting on the guys. So then I, um, this one day, I was literally sitting on my desk, typing up a, uh, a case note for a student, and I sent the request, a live request. But then as I'm sitting there, like, typing and then just citing my phone and listening, I see this thing load up saying, uh, Wanya Morris wants to go live with you. And then it's loading up, you know? Yeah, and so yeah, by then, yeah. but as soon as I saw that thing, oh, I was like gobsmacked. And so I had my little ear, Samsung earpods in. I left my desk and I walked outside. So I was thinking, oh my gosh, where can I sing? Where can I sing? I got nowhere to sing. I'm at work. I'm sitting in my office. I can either go sing in the toilet, but someone might be in the toilet. The, 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 what is it? The boardrooms are busy. So I was like, okay, I got nowhere else to go. I'm going to have to go sing under this tree. So um, I used to work uh, at a place called ATWC, the Anglican Trust for Women and Children, in Odehu. And so I walked over and I sung by this tree. But the funniest thing was, um, as I'm walking over, I'm accepting the request to go live. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like I couldn't believe it. I got the, the video on my Instagram page. I was like, oh my gosh, bro, like I can't believe that you accepted. And he was just like, yo, what's up, man? What's good? Like he was talking to me on, on Instagram, bro. And I was like, <laughs> I was just buzzing out, man. I could have probably like fainted, man. I was like, oh no, yeah. I couldn't believe it. Eh? And he's like, oh man, thank you. Like I'm a huge fan of yours from New Zealand. I walked over to the tree and then he's like, yo, what's up, man? Like, and then he's like, and then I said, oh, yeah, I'm a musician too. And he's like, okay, you gonna sing some? I think that's what he said. And then I was like, yeah, yeah I'll sing something. And I sang um, Freddie Jackson, Rock With Me Tonight. Ooh. One of my Ooh. all-time favorites. Bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> um, but the funniest thing was because I was hiding under the tree and staff were like driving into the place, staff were driving in, I was trying to not be seen or heard, right? Because I just started this job. So I'm like, dang. Anyways, I was singing, singing, but the funniest thing was, as I was singing, I was reading the comments, and people were going, oh, I love, because the, um, they could hear the birds in the background in the trees, <laughs> <laughs> and so I started to sing, and I did that, uh, Rock With Me Tonight, and as I finished the song, so cool, finished it, I was like, yo, thank you, brother, and he goes, yo, yo, man, yo, yo, my man, let me, that was, you know, he was, he was happy with what I'd done, and he goes, yo, let me just, let me just tell you something, you know, I got, I got some, some critique, I was like, cool, man, I always appreciate critique, uh, and then he said, um, he said to me, he goes, um, you did really well on the song. He said, but one part, one of the parts in the song where people expect you to go up, you didn't go up. You chose to bring it down. And I said, yeah, yeah. And he said, one of the things about singing a cappella is if you're going to do songs like that, people are going to want to hear those parts. And when you don't do it, it's like they've missed out on what they're used to hearing. Yeah, yeah. He said, and what also helps there too is bringing the key down if it's too high and you can't hit the note. And so I, I really appreciated the critique. I was like, yeah, man, like, you know, I'll definitely learn from it. And then Did you goes, tell him, I was, I'm at work, I don't want anyone to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, to be honest, I should have, eh? I honestly should have. But I think I was like, too like shy to do anything mm-hmm. um, or just to look any sort of way. So I was just like, okay, yeah, man, like, I'm, I'm, I'm my bad, I'll, I'll do better next time. And then he goes, yo, um, my man, he said, um, come back. I want you to come back on my live in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, I'll be doing a, uh, a competition, and I want you to audition to be on it. And I was like, yeah, definitely. I'm there, man. But um, I, in when I was in such a state, I hadn't even screen recorded um, what I had just done. Yeah. So I was like, oh, damn. I just like that special moment, like being able to sing for the great one year Morris. Like, I just didn't get it. Like, I didn't record it at all or screen record it, so I walked away and I was like, oh, I was pretty gutted about that. Like, oh, no, I, I can just say I did it, but no one saw it, you know? And so, um, funnily enough, one of the Usos, um, Sam Brown. Oh, man. You know Sam Brown, man. Yeah. Lifestyle, worship, you know? Yeah. He um, tagged me in a story, and he goes, 
I forgot what it said, but something along the lines of it's great to see one of two of my my favorite voices or something like that, or my favorite singers, um, Mauso. Or I think it was Mauso getting to sing, you know, in front of the great one year Morris. And I was like, oh, he got it. And then another one of the boys who I was in one of the bands with, he sent me a screen record. And he's like, bro, you go on this page, you screen record your portion, and it'll have it on there. So anyways, like I was able to do that and keep it for myself. Uh, and then I auditioned. So I auditioned for him. I sang for him like a couple weeks later. He had started doing auditions. So I sang for him and his daughter. And um, my connection, for some reason, the internet was playing up again. I was like, dang, I was at work. But the funny thing is, the week that my boss heard me singing, I didn't realize my boss was actually watching the performance <laughs> of me under the tree. So she came into the office and she goes, why didn't you tell me you were singing for one year? I was like, I didn't know if I was allowed. She goes, you crazy. It's <laughs> like, you know, R&B royalty. She was like, next time you have to sing, you tell me and we'll find somewhere for you to go sing. A quiet place so you can sing properly and do what you need to do. So I explained to her when the time was. And she was like, okay, book one of the boardrooms. You can have the room. You can set up what you need to set up and just sing, you know, and just do your work there. So, you know, things were falling into place. You know, my work was willing to work with me on that and just give me that opportunity. So I sang again for him uh, and his daughter um, for my auditions two weeks later. And I did, um, what's the song? My, 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 Johnny Gill. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nice. And I sang my, 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 Johnny Gill. He was blown away again really impressed you know and i was humbled again you know and he's just like you know welcome to the competition <clears throat> and i was just, I was i was buzzing while well, i was still buzzing and it was crazy because every singer that came on there you know like what i was saying about preconceived ideas and psyching yourself out i was psyching myself out like i see these amazing singers and i'm like whoa he's got this falsetto and and they got this range and they do this and they do this there's no way that i can even compete with that you know, and um, I was just really fortunate. Um, out of all the people that had auditioned, uh, he settled on 66 contestants for the show. Uh, and, and, and and I was one of them. And I was just, like, just blown away, bro. Like, I couldn't believe the position that I was in, the opportunity I was able to be given um, to converse with this guy, yeah. to, to have um, him put me in a group chat with him included and we're conversating and he's saying, oh, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I've seen. This is what's coming up and communicating on the daily. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, like pinch me like, bro, this is crazy. Like to think that all those years of grinding and all the hard work and you get an opportunity like this that you never would ever see coming, mm-hmm. you know? And I was just like, just grateful for every opportunity, man so so grateful you know and um i was fortunate you know battling it out competing uh to make it to the semi-finals so from 66 he cut it down to 20 so this is all online all online mm. so just all on instagram live and so you play your track and so some of the guys who, who are really onto it they have this thing called an irig where they hook up the sounds and it, the sound that they project on a microphone comes across crisp and sounding oh. good and is that what you had Nah, man. I had um, karaoke track playing over a speaker. Once was playing over a Bluetooth speaker, and the other time was playing over my laptop hooked up to the work uh, speaker in the boardroom. And that's all I had, you know? But then, because I started to see people bringing their A game and switching up their outfits, and I was like, oh, I got to do the same too. You know, I can't make the mistake that I did in my karaoke comps, you know? I got to bring it too. So, you know, one one stage there, I rock like a black and gold. Um, um, just jacket you know and that was cool and that really lifted i think the performance as well you know but like made it to the semi-finals battled got to battle some really amazing singers man really really like killer singers that i got to battle um and so each week he'd have an outline of how the show would go so he'd go okay this week um you're going to find out you find out i think uh, only a probably like the day before who you're battling and you'll you'll find out i think you find out slightly earlier the song that you're singing but they don't tell you who you got to battle then they tell you oh, this is who you're gonna battle this is the person you're gonna battle and um some of them you've never met before you see them on their heats so when you get to battle it's like mano mano like yeah, let's go yeah. like you're bringing what you can bring i'm bringing what i can bring and you just battle it out man and um some great times I was fortunate to make it to the semis. Um, 
to my <laughs> to to my um you know song selection man for my uh, for my semi-finals i chose to sing um what did i choose to sing at last Etta james i chose to sing that song man and and i love the song man i really love the song but i think just based off what it, everyone else had brought i didn't quite bring, like i felt i brought it vocally but um that one of the judges just wasn't feeling it that day um i didn't shift into the next gear that i i had but i just didn't tap into you know like um and so i didn't make it through and one of the most annoying things man <laughs> one of the judges when i sang at, at last and i finished my performance he goes he's like oh oh my goodness like yeah, that song reminded me of uh, when I used to go visit my grandma at the rest home. She'd be eating green jello. <laughs> and I was like, in my head, I was like, if I could reach through the screen <laughs> and just give you a little slap. No, but, you know, like, and um, we had this, um, and also in the comments, because, you know, as you're performing on a live or as you just talk it on live, you can see the comments people are saying. And, um, man, this guy was hammering me like this, um, He's a, he's a comedian. I think it's like D D Darren Darren Coley. This comedian, he was just laying into me in the comments, man. But I had to keep my composure, you know? Like, I couldn't be the hot-headed person that I usually am. You know, I was just like, okay, like, I wore it on the chin. I didn't bring it today, you know? I didn't bring my A-game, which, in all honesty, I didn't, you know? I went with a safe option and something that I knew as opposed to something that could have pushed me, you know? Um, and, yeah. So I didn't make it to the finals. Um, but then at the end of all that, did the finals, the deserved winner won it, this uh, amazing singer by the name of Jaina Brown, really gifted man. Um, you know, and then um, his assistant reaches out on Insta. So we still got a group chat thingy. <laughs> still a group chat with the great one yay, man, you know. And, um, What's you know, your life? Right, it's cool. We still got it to this day. Yeah. You know, and then we have a bit of bands on there and stuff like that, mm. and uh, you know. Did um, you even ask some questions about boys men in the old days? Like, yeah, I what did. went wrong and all? Because um, how they lost Michael? They yes, yes. Michael so left. So I honestly, like, I wanted to, but I didn't have really have the courage because oh, I'd yeah. seen <laughs> other YouTube videos and and podcasts and stuff that had covered that, or people that you know like reckon they know what had happened. So I didn't want to, I guess, sort of like um, ruffle any feathers, eh? So I just left it at at that, uh, but I wanted to, bro. But I asked him about other stuff. Um, what else is I gonna say? Um, yeah, and it was just so cool. So his assistant reaches out, and then the assistant's like, uh, "Hey, we um, we're doing a reunion." So the way it worked is, one year was only going to fly out the top three that won, or like, or he only wanted the th like for free. He'd fly them out. And so he goes, um, the sister reaches out and says, um, so Wanye is thinking of doing a reunion for the One Wednesday Season 1 alumni. And um, he's wondering if you'd like to come to Vegas to meet him with a full itinerary. And I just like, I nearly died, bro. <laughs> I nearly died. I remember sitting in my lounge at home, bro. Like, just so... Does it feel like you're being packed? Or? Huh? Does it feel like... Bro, I was ah, just, good one. Yeah, like, well, I was thinking, I was like, bro, is, is this real? Like, is this fake? But, like, because, lucky, because she had been communicating with us, I knew that it was legit. But I was just, like, so... Wow. Lost for words, bro. <laughs>